This right here is what's known as a clay tablet, a pictograph that was used to record a lot of different things thousands of years ago. And though this one might look mysterious, apparently this is a receipt for beer. A lot of beer. So yeah, this is some dude's beer tab. Well, I guess more realistically, this was most likely a part of a large trade when someone purchased a large amount of beer. With this very unique pottery technique used in many different locations in the Middle East to record all sorts of stuff. Anything from various stories and legends to historical writings about various kings to, of course, various receipts produced during trade. And quite a lot of these have been discovered over the years, with many, though translated, still missing the date for when they were produced or for when exactly all of this happened. But in this recent study that we're going to be discussing today, a team of scientists was able to discover basically a completely new dating technique that doesn't just now allow us to date all of these tablets, but also reveals a few more details about a very unusual magnetic anomaly that happened on planet Earth thousands of years ago. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing a, I guess, two different topics. The magnetic anomaly itself, and the results from this unusual study involving clay tablets. And I guess let's briefly discuss the tablets because this is where the mystery starts. These tablets are not organic, so they don't actually contain any carbon. And that means that we cannot carbon date them, discovering their age. However, they're often mixed with a lot of other stuff, including various iron oxides, that as we know from a lot of other studies, very often are affected by the magnetic field of planet Earth. As a matter of fact, we know that iron oxides, or magnetite, very often leaves behind a very specific fingerprint of Earth's magnetosphere. And so, at least in theory, this is something we could detect inside these clay artifacts as well. But I guess the question here is, how could this be possible, especially if we assume that the magnetic field was relatively similar in strength for thousands of years? Well, it's a nice assumption. Turns out, not correct. And here I'm going to go on a bit of a sidetrack and talk about another anomaly that's currently studied by scientists. Let's start with the modern magnetic anomaly. The most powerful today is known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. We don't really feel it on planet Earth, but satellites and even sometimes airplanes definitely do. In this video from ESA, you can even see how it sort of shifts over a period of several years. And this is a really large anomaly in terms of the size and in terms of strength, basically resulting in a kind of a magnetic hole right above South America. In the past, it's already been known to produce various glitches inside satellites, because here the magnetic field is unable to protect anything from extremely powerful charged particles coming from a lot of different regions. And according to modern studies, it seems to be moving in the northwest direction, and potentially is splitting into two parts. Although intriguingly, it was discovered to potentially have existed sometime in the past as well, as far back as 11 million years ago. But what exactly formed it is currently unknown. One of the explanations use these unusual chunks inside our planet, that we've discussed previously in the video in the description, to potentially explain what's going on here. But we know that there are two such chunks, and the other side of the planet doesn't have anything similar. So the explanation here is sort of unsatisfactory. But what this shows us is that Anomalies, magnetic anomalies, do exist on planet Earth and potentially either weaken or strengthen the magnetic field for at least some time, at least in some regions. And it just so happens that back in 2009, scientists studying various artifacts from Mesopotamia and essentially from the Middle East discovered signs of a very large spike in magnetic field in 72 different samples. And here the magnetic field must have strengthened by at least three times. Definitely affecting the Middle Eastern regions, but also potentially a lot of other regions on the planet as well, suggesting that it could have been some kind of a global event. It's not entirely clear exactly what this was and why this was, but it does suggest that the magnetic field strengthened at least three times. And so just like the South Atlantic anomaly, here we had signs of another anomaly that might have been affecting the planet without anyone noticing. But the tablets might have noticed specifically various clay bricks that were created around the same time and did contain magnetite or iron oxides inside of it. And so in this very recent study, the scientists decided to focus specifically on that, trying to identify as many of these bricks as possible, discovering the strength of the magnetic field in the process, and then potentially use this to date other ones as well. Mostly focusing on the regions you see right here. 
The red circles represent the samples from this study, the green circles were from previous studies. In essence, conducting what you would call an archaeomagnetic dating. A type of a scientific investigation that tries to establish the age of something by using the magnetic field. Something that could potentially be super important for archaeology, because pottery in general is basically one of the most common type of artifacts discovered in various locations from various cultures. And not surprisingly, they did discover quite a lot of variation depending on the age of the tablet. And because a lot of these tablets also contained stamps from various kings that used to rule during this time, it became possible to confirm the time and the magnetic spike. With this event referred to as Levantine Iron Age Geomagnetic Anomaly that most likely happened sometime between 1050 BC and 550 BC, basically making it last for approximately 500 years. And interestingly, the signs of this anomaly are even detectable in artifacts from ancient China. Once again suggesting that whatever this was, it was extremely powerful and was most likely global, increasing the strength of a magnetosphere by at least three times. But unlike previous studies, here the scientists were able to date everything much more accurately, thus even producing the results showing how the field changed over time. In a nutshell, it would look something like this. Now this is a combination of this study and previous studies, but it essentially shows us the strength of the magnetosphere over a period of approximately 3000 years. 0 AD going all the way back to 3000 BC, with all this achieved by looking at those iron oxides inside of the clay tablets. Here the scientists conducted experiments where they basically heated and cooled down objects in magnetic fields of various strength in order to then match the results to what's seen inside the tablet. And more importantly, by now having this graph, future studies can use this to date these tablets even better. But in terms of the magnetic field studies, this also presents us with a really intriguing mystery. Here it shows us several magnetic spikes. Spikes that created extremely powerful magnetic field relatively quickly in just a few decades, which was then followed by a dramatic drop a few decades after. And strangely enough, this didn't just happen once, it seems to have happened several times. In this case, potentially at least four times, with the overall strength being at least three times more than the average field on Earth today. And so in this case, this particular study is sort of important for a lot of different fields. Definitely for archaeology, especially involving anything made out of clay, but also for studies involving magnetosphere or solar studies that try to understand the interaction between Earth's magnetosphere and powerful emissions from the Sun. At the moment, it's super unclear, or I guess kind of mysterious, what actually happened on Earth in order to create those very massive spikes. Or to be more accurate, what happened inside Earth. Because all modern theories suggest that the magnetosphere is generated in the outer core. And so something must have shifted here, or maybe something else happened, involving some kind of a large chunk of something else interacting with the core, in order to suddenly increase the magnetosphere by so much, repeating it several times. And though none of this mattered to the ancients, it definitely matters to us, especially because of things like satellites. Today, a lot of studies on the magnetosphere focus on trying to understand exactly how all of this works and what we can do to protect the planet from some kind of a major magnetic surge that could potentially disrupt the entire planet. Now, obviously, this mostly just affects all kinds of technology. It doesn't really affect biological life. Important for things like internet, modern banking, and telecommunication. Not so important for physical survival. Nevertheless, these are still really important studies and they're definitely teaching us a little bit more about what was happening on Earth thousands of years ago. But more importantly, they might also finally help us understand how magnetospheres actually form and what to expect from other exoplanets out there. And so until additional discoveries or something else cool about clay tablets, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves renewable space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.